Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge and this is Cruise Peruse, episode number 140. Boys and girls, we are back on the road. Oh my God, we haven't done this in a long time since, oh God, I think before Atlanta. So back at it again, boys and girls, the Cruise Peruse, we are driving, talking sports ball or anything that titillates our interest. And of course, boys and girls, sports ball always titillates my tantrums. Like I don't, I don't know why I said it like that, but you know why people get confused all the time on certain shit because they're being told to what the fucking feel. All right, especially when you go on Twitter, people are pretty much told like, "Hey, you should feel like this. You should get mad at this shit." Like, why? Why though? Why? And one curious circumstance is the case of Kurt Suzuki, catcher for the Washington Nationals. Now, boys and girls, need I remind you, the Washington Nationals of D.C. are World Series champions. They are winners of the baseball world, and they were invited to the White House to meet the President of the United States. And I know, boys and girls, everyone has their own political beliefs. Everyone has their own fucking thoughts on the President. I get it. But I'll lay a very simple philosophy for you, okay? If a leader of one of the greatest countries in the world asks you, hey man, why don't you swing by to the White House where I live and get recognized for doing something that is basically a physical activity and you get paid shit tons of money to do so, right? That's, es that's essentially what athletes are. And so they get invited, they shake hands with the president, the vice president, all that jazz. And it's, to me, it's just like a nice little time. Like, okay, cool, man. Like there are things like sports in the world that can unify people together and just ignore the stupid ass politics. But of course, when you got Trump in the office, you got everybody going ape shit. Everybody have an opinion. Oh, Kurt Suzuki, revoke his Asian card. Eh. He wears a fucking MAGA hat. A Make America Great hat. Make America Great Again hat. I apologize, boys and girls, for fucking butchering that acronym. But listen, man, he's wearing a MAGA hat, and he gets fucking Titanic titty grabbed by Donald Trump. And listen, President Trump is just trying to be a fun guy. Like, I don't necessarily agree with his, you know, overall tenure. <laughs> if that's the best way to put it. I, I don't really agree with a lot of his politics. I don't really agree with... A lot of his policies, but generally speaking, I don't let the stupid politics get to me. I really don't, because at the end of the day, I don't fucking care, right? All I care about is, is our country good? Is our country not in the middle of a war? Great. All right. Is our country in the sham uh, in shits and shambles? No? All right, cool. I'm good to go. Is my bottom line being affected? No? Cool. Whatever. That's me. That's just me. That's me as a honest guy telling you flat out how I feel about Trump, how I feel about this government. I quite frankly don't care. As long as it doesn't fucking impede on my livelihood, I don't really give a shit. I really don't. But people find it necessary to get pissed off all the fucking time at whatever. So they glom onto the Kurt Suzuki MAGA hat, MAGA hat thing. And already the woke, broke people are all up in arms. Oh, Kurt Suzuki... What a piece of shit. Like, look at Trump just... Uh... Like, who cares? Kurt Suzuki is having a fucking wonderful time. He won the World Series! Let him just do whatever the fuck he wants! Oh my fucking God, dude. Why the fuck do you care about what a fucking baseball catcher does after winning a World Series? Who gives a shit if he's getting Titanic grabbed by fucking Donald Trump? Who cares? Who gives a flying fuck? You broke woke motherfuckers do, apparently. Apparently, that's all you give a shit about. <laughs> the president, he sucks. The baseball, is yeah. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. Again, congratulations to the Washington Nationals. Do whatever the fuck you want. They go to the National... Uh, the, you know, the Nationals go to the Capitals game. They have a fucking blast. I'm watching that shit like, man, that reminds me of when Ovi won the cup and he was just going on a tear. Good for them. Good for them. Why am I going to get mad about that shit? 
Like, it's a city that's been fucking hampered by dick punches for decades, and now they finally win something. And everybody in the fucking media, every goddamn news outlet wants a fucking story. So they're trying to shit on Kurt Suzuki. Like, fuck off. Fuck you. And all you dumbass Asians say, uh, uh, Kurt Suzuki's Asian card's revoked. Shut the fuck up. That man is more human being an Asian than anybody else. He just does what he fucking wants to do. He wants to wear a goddamn MAGA hat and get hugged by the President of the United States. Dude, go for it. You're a World Series winner. Do what you want. Do what you want. No rape and murder. No rape and murder, though. I always say that shit. I do, boys and girls. Is that some fucked up shit? You don't want to be doing that. And you, 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 you. I don't want to talk about politics anymore. I don't. I don't. Like, politics give me a fucking headache. I talked about this fucking political shit for like five minutes. I'm already getting a fucking headache. Okay? I'm already counting down the minutes till I get back home and smoke a fucking fat blunt because I won't be forgetting about this shit. I do. So fucking dumb. Kind of like the Dodgers. I want to forget the postseason ever fucking happened, but the reality is, like, it happened, the Nationals won it, and bam. You also had the regular season to, you know, to to have that preceding it, which was great. I mean, the regular season was fantastic. Saw a live Dodgers game for the first time in decades. Decades? Holy shit, it's been a decade or more. But with the Dodgers, yeah. They were regular season wunderkinds. I, they, they were fantastic all throughout the regular season. And they are going to get recognized for some regular season goodies, although it won't really mean anything. Cy Young finalist for the NL includes Ryu Hyun Jin, Hyun Jin Ryu of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He is going to be hitting free agency here soon, boys and girls. And I believe he will be gone. Yeah. Pretty sure Hyun Jin's going to be gone you know, in the off season, I would imagine the Dodgers are going to make an all-in run for Garrett Cole, Rendon, um, kind of the nature of how, how the Dodgers do, and they'll still fail in the postseason. That's my lot in life as a Dodgers fan. I, I know the failure is going to be coming very soon, very fucking soon. And yeah, it's also you know, of note that Cody Bellinger is going to be an NL MVP finalist. And I got the news wrong yesterday. I thought uh, he was already out of the NL MVP finalist talk, but here he is, Cody Bellinger, NL MVP finalist. And listen, he looked fantastic all throughout the regular season. I just, I just never understand how the Dodgers always choke in the playoffs. Like they bolster this great fucking energy and tenacity all throughout the regular season. But I, you know, the whole thing is, I I mean, looking back on it now, I should have really seen the signs in the regular season. The game I went to, uh, it was the Miami Marlins versus LA Dodgers in Los Angeles in Dodger Stadium. That game should have been a fucking shutout. Okay. It should have been a fucking shutout from the Dodgers, but I believe they won it like 10 to six. And that's when I started having this wriggling feeling in my head, like, oh my God, our defense sucks. Our fielding sucks ass. And our pitching depth is a joke. It's abysmal. Gonsolin. All right. But that's the Dodgers. We're going to continue to sell merch and spend all this fucking money, but get nothing out of it. Yeah. That's the nature of the Dodgers. That's also the nature of the Dallas Cowboys. Did you know that? Did you guys know that? They haven't, you know how many times they have to emphasize this on ESPN? The Dallas Cowboys haven't made it to the NFC Championship since 1996. Like, uh, all right, dude, it's been 23 years. I get it. I, I fucking get it. Are we doing a countdown or something? I don't need to fucking keep, keep getting reminded of this shit. I don't really give a fuck, okay? But here we are, getting reminded consistently how inefficient the Dallas Cowboys have spent their money and their assets but on Monday Night Football, boys and girls, the Dallas Cowboys grab a win 38-18 to versus the New York Football Giants on the turf of MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. And granted, boys and girls, the only really memorable thing about this game was the Black Cat. If you know what I'm talking about, you do know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, a random Black Cat during a pause and play ran into MetLife Stadium. I mean, it's, in, it's on the field at this point, in the 50-yard line. And it runs to the end zone for a 50-yard touchdown. Now, I'm looking at that cat and thinking, okay, man, 
you're teasing a lot of NFL fans out there. I'm sure Dolphins fans, they already made a meme out of that shit. Dolphins fans were getting excited. I would assume Cincinnati Bengals fans would get excited about a running back that can run an open field for 50 yards. Probably the Chicago Bears need some sort of running help. But the reality of that little moment was if you believe in luck, it swung towards fucking Dallas's favor because before that, okay, before that, Dallas was losing. People forget, how, you know, when what a win actually does for a team, but Dallas was actually losing this game early in that first half, in that first quarter, really. Uh, a turnover that starts from Dallas, and it's just this kind of punctuating point from the New York Giants that, hey, we're a football team. We're going to play well. And Daniel Jones did really well in that first half. He did. And then in the second half... Uh, it's the luck of the black cat. That's what we're going to call it. The luck of the black cat. Or unluck. Um, depending on what, what what side of the field you're looking at. Or what team you're cheering for. The Dallas Cowboys made a pretty nice little comeback. And Daniel Jones and the New York football giants turned into a fucking turnover machine. And so, with all those turnovers, Dallas ultimately won the battle. And a fumble recovered by a Dallas player running it into the end zone fucked up my parlay for the weekend so every single one of my bets went flat it died and that ladies and gentlemen is why you do not gamble too much this is a game for degenerates I love it I do I love looking at the numbers uh, they're fun to do but my oh my losing two three weeks in a row it's not fun <laughs> it's it's not fun and losing in marginal fashions is the worst games, too. Like, the Indianapolis Colts game, barely lost that. The fucking, yeah, Cowboys game, barely lost that parlay. What is this fucking asshole doing? Why the fuck don't you close in on that fucking gap, you fucking prick? Go fuck yourself. Holy fucking shit. Kind of the same sentiment I throw at myself when I lose a betting week. Like, fuck. You dumb fuck fuck are you doing all that gap in your brain you don't fill it with knowledge you dumb fuck the nature of the beast boys and girls nature of the beast football is a very arduous season and whether you're a fan or a player they can get the best of you fucking piece of shit fuck you fuck you why don't you fucking go right earlier than you fucking prick fucking asshole fucking creeping at 33 all for like two fucking miles fucking cocksucking bastard, go fuck yourself, go fuck yourself, the same fucking thing I say to Cam Newton, and about Cam Newton, sorry kids, I don't like Cam Newton, I think he's a fucking arrogant prick, talent is just completely overshadowed by his, uh, uh just his cantankerous nature, I don't really like the cat, I don't, I think on the field, he was... Paraded as a great quarterback. In reality, I don't think he was even a decent quarterback. Like, mediocre at best in my eyes. Yeah, fuckers on his fucking cell phone. Piece of shit. Hope he fucking crash. Asshole. And that's not what I really wished upon Cam Newton. You know, I didn't wish him to crash, but he's out for the season. Injured reserve. And I'll be honest, man. Kyle Allen is a significantly better quarterback at this point in the season. Why the fuck would you try to even bring Cam back? He provided ample evidence through last season and the first few games in this season before he went down injured that he wasn't good enough. He was mediocre at best, and that injury was going to set him back. Honestly, I think his time in Carolina is done. I wouldn't be surprised in the offseason if they move from Cam. Uh, there are plenty of teams that are looking for a decent quarterback to get their shit going. I'm looking at the Chicago Bears. I'm looking at the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, it's going to be really, really curious to see how Carolina moves on from this point forward. And those are the same kind of stupid questions that people were asking and the topic they were bringing up about the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, Minshew Mania. Oh, Minshew's great. Minshew's the greatest thing in the world. 
Gardner Minshew is getting ousted by the mere shadow of Big Dick Nick, and his big ass cock shadow is just hovering hovering over Gardner Minshew because let's be honest man the Minshew mania was decent enough because they were going against really shitty ass teams and guess what your defense is not playing up to snuff Jacksonville your defense is atrocious at times and so Big Dick Nick might just mess that for the last few games of this regular season but I doubt I absolutely doubt the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to make it to the playoffs. Um, unless, of course, Big Dick Nick proves me wrong, swings his big old dick around, and gets the Jacksonville Jaguars to the playoffs. Which, uh, it's it's hard, because I think, you know, well, not, not only his dick, but his conference, his division, is insane. I mean, you look at the AFC South, the Houston Texans, the Indianapolis Colts have a very good grip on that division's top two. Then you go into the AFC West, which is very fun. Uh, the Oakland Raiders are in a very good position to make it to the wild card rounds. The Kansas City Chiefs are still firing on all cylinders. And then you move on to the AFC East, which, curiously enough, New England and Buffalo. Two, wild, two solid, firm placements right there in the top two spots in that division. Then the AFC North, a complete buttfuck of a clusterfuck where the Browns have shit themselves all over, unfortunately. And the Steelers have a viable chance at a possible wildcard spot. But honestly, those three other divisions that I just named before them, I think the wildcard spot between those three teams, the Oakland Raiders, the uh, Buffalo Bills, and uh, you know either the Texans or Indianapolis Colts, depending on how they finish out the rest of the season, it's a real tough test for Jacksonville. And I just, you know, just by logistics, I don't think they're going to make it. I just don't. I just don't think they're going to make it. Um, bit of a negative negative sauce to, you know, sprinkle on for the Jacksonville fans. But come on, guys, you knew. You knew. Like, the Gardner Minshew thing was nice. It was adorable. But it's all about Big Dick Nick, man. It is all about Big Dick Nick. You know, just saying, man, Big Dick Nick would have won that London game. Sorry, Gardner. It, that would have been the reality. And all these fucking fans, oh, Gardner's a real deal. A lot of hot takes, man. A lot of hot takes. Like, I know Rich Eisen was huge on Gardner Minshew, but eh, Big Dick Nick. He gets money for reasons, man. He does. And, I mean, the rest of the football season has been really interesting. Um, we're, we're basically about halfway into the regular season for NFL. And there have been some shocking surprises. There have been some pleasantly great surprises. And then, of course, there have been the typical failures and success stories. I mean, the Steelers just farting it out. I kind of knew that was going to happen. Everybody didn't. Not really surprised at that personally. Uh, Buffalo Bills doing much better than I expected. This is a great, that's a great surprise for me. Um, but the NFL season is full of narratives and fun times. It is. I mean, well, and, uh, and as is, you know, all other sports ball, right? I'm not trying to discount, discount anything else. But the NFL is so short. It's from September to, you know, January. I mean, that one week in February is just the Super Bowl. But if you condense it all together, that's just what? four, maybe five full months of football. So it's a very condensed time. So we value the narratives and stories more. But of course, there are other sports out there, boys and girls, of course there are, that stretches out longer, namely football. You know, I'm wearing Arsenal gear and soccer goes on for a long fucking time throughout the season. It feels like forever, from August to fucking May. Okay, so that's nine months compared to five. So narratives get sprinkled throughout um, soccer, whereas the NFL is just condensed right in your face. But the curious part of, of the football world right now is this rescinded red card uh, from the English FA, which I completely agree with. It's a good thing that they're doing it because it shouldn't have been a red card initially, but it was. Um, 
Tottenham Hotspur Son Heung Min gets his red card uh, reevaluated and rescinded from the English FA after a unfortunate foul on Everton player Andre Gomez. And it, it is unfortunate. It is unfortunate. The way you know Andre Gomez actually dislo- dislocated his um, his ankle there, but honestly, even as an Arsenal supporter, you're looking at that and thinking like that's not a that's not a straight red. That that can't be a straight red. I mean, look at the trajectory. Look at how he went about tackling the guy, and by all accounts and by all the aesthetics, by all the optics, that is not a red card. It wasn't. And the English FA admitting to their mistake, you know, call it being hopeful, but maybe this is the turn. Maybe this is the turn the English FA needs because let's be honest, man, these fuckers never admit to their fucking mistake. And for them to do so, it's a fucking miracle, ladies and gentlemen. It is a goddamn miracle, okay? And maybe, maybe boys and girls, this is a sign that things may change. Maybe the English FA may might just, you know, admit to their fucking mistakes moving forward, but I doubt it. I doubt it. VAR, they're talking about radical changes. I doubt that shit's ever going to happen. I doubt they're going to fucking replace these old fucking English referees who suck at their goddamn jobs. Uh, Martin Atkinson, um, sometimes Kevin Friend. Eh, Kevin Friend's all right. He's not terrible. Mike Dean. I mean, the list goes on, man. There are terrible English FA officials. And don't expect radical changes. Don't. Um, It's the English FA. Just don't. And I kind of say this with the same... um, What's the word? Same tone. God, I spaced out there. Same tone um, that I use for my expectations for Arsenal. But Arsenal kind of put themselves in a corner with the Granit Xhaka situation. Now, boys and girls, if you do not know, Arsenal Football Club's midfielder, Granit Xhaka, number 34, a couple weeks back, um, a frustrating match where I believe it was a Crystal Palace match. It was. Um, Granit Xhaka was named captain a couple weeks, you know, when the season started. And during this frustrating match where he's getting... He's getting slandered. He's getting fucking booed. He's getting, you know, yelled at by the fans who I don't even consider them fans. I don't. I consider them uh, malcontents and nuisance because you're the fucking asshole cancerous people who are telling this young man, go kill yourself. Hope your fucking wife dies. Hope your kid gets disease. Like you're saying all this nasty, disgusting shit. Like what the fuck do you expect from a guy? Like what do you expect from a human being? A guy who isn't even 30 yet to respond. It's an emotional mess. What do you expect? It's an emotional mess. And listen, I don't agree with how Granit Xhaka went about things. I really don't. I don't like the fact that he threw his captain's arm back. He threw down the Arsenal shirt and just sarcastically clapped out of the, you know, off the field. He sauntered off and I didn't agree with it, but listen, let's look at the perspective of Granit Xhaka. Cantankerous quote-unquote fans were getting on his ass about how poor he was doing, but they went further to attack his family in those verbiage. So to me, it's not just on Granit Xhaka, it's on the fans. And most importantly, it's on the manager, who, let's be honest, man, Xhaka isn't the most emotionally stable guy. He's not the most emotionally mature man. We've seen that on his production on the football field. Yet you found it necessary to assign him as a captain? What the fuck was that for? Like, did you calculate the situation, Unai? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And now, because of this whole craziness, and this whole controversy, now Arsenal goes back and edits out who's going to be captain. And now... This is a captain's list I can absolutely agree with. You got Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who is going to be our captain for Arsenal Football Club. 100% agree. 100% agree this is a captain. This is a guy who you want leading down the field. This is the general you want leading the way. 
with this goals, with this magnificent touch. And then second on the list is Hector Bellerin, who again, 100% agreed. This guy as co-captain, second captain, vice captain, whatever you want to call it, is a young man who is who has personified what it means to be an Arsenal gentleman. He has personified what it means to represent the club. And he is an Arsenal boy, through and through. Hector Bellerin is an Arsenal lad, through and through, and I love that decision. Alexander Lacazette comes third. I am actually wearing his jersey, his kit. Love that Alexander Lacazette is getting some recognition for his heart, his passion, and I mean, God damn it, man, the skills. These are skilled guys. And fourth, and to, 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 to my thought, my most important uh, placement for captain, and I don't care if it's fourth, it's Mesut Ozil. Mesut Ozil, of course, he hasn't been named for the Europa League, uh, tra you know, the traveling team for next uh, next match day, which is tomorrow. But Mesut Ozil being named captain, to me, is a big deal. To me, this represents a possible transition from Unai Emery's arrogant thought process to maybe the board and Raul Sanieri, uh, Sanyehi and... Uh, oh, gosh. Um... Raul and oh my god I keep forgetting names I forget names because my, my brain fucking sucks but the whole point is I think this is management saying listen Ozil is a great character he's a great guy I don't know why the fuck you ousted him but he is captain worthy that's what it shows to me uh, from Arsenal and I'll go ahead and end it there because my words aren't coming out right I'm very tired but here we are on the east side you know getting some shit done so I'll catch you next time, and I'll leave it at that, boys and girls. Follow me at the Sky Lounge on all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents. Now, fuck off.